I've spent the past six months designing, building, and almost mastering the art of hydroponics. I've built a hydroponics farm in my basement that produces 96 heads of lettuce every eight and a half weeks. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how my system works, how I made it, materials, nutrients, pH, and all of the many mistakes that I've made along the way. Now for all of you who are like, what the heck is hydroponics? Let's clear that up. So basically you just swap dirt for water and sun for LED lights and boom, you have hydroponics. So hydroponics is a way of growing food inside, usually vertically in water, instead of conventional farming where you're growing outside in the dirt horizontally. It uses 90% less water than conventional agriculture, 99% less land. And the crazy thing to me is that it produces 20 times larger yields per unit area. Like that is just wild. So when I first heard and started researching hydroponics, I was completely intrigued by it. So of course I wanted to test it out for myself and see how it worked. And I'm still so surprised at the yields that we are getting because I'm the farthest thing from a gardener and don't have a green thumb at all. And yet the lettuce and the entire system is just thriving. Now let me give you the overview of my hydroponics farm. So to optimize space, I made it vertically stacked. So there are three levels and there's 21 inches between the bottom pipe and then the next pipe. And then there are LED grow lights that hang to the level below it. The entire system, it is six feet long by two feet wide and seven feet high. And then the actual pipe, which is the growing medium that the lettuce is growing out of, it itself is six feet long. And then there are eight grow holes in every single pipe. And now for the big question. How does it actually work? So basically I have a reservoir at the bottom of the system, which I add nutrients to. Then there's a pump in this reservoir, which pumps water and circulates it through the entire system. Water is pumped from the pump through an inlet tube all the way to the top level of the system. And then it zigzags and spirals its way through every single pipe, the four pipes in the top layer, before dropping down to the layer below it and then zigzagging through all of those pipes. And then it drops one layer down again to the very bottom layer of the system, and it again zigzags through each of those pipes before then flowing out through the outflow tube back into the reservoir. And then this water is just recirculated again and again constantly. The pump is never turned off. It is always on and it's always circulating water throughout this system. Now creating this entire system, it probably didn't take nearly as long as what you may think. The longest and kind of like most finicky part of it was just getting the pipe ready. So the growing medium that the plants are growing in and that the water is circulating throughout is schedule 40 PVC pipe, which is water potable and safe for food. The PVC is three inches wide and five feet long. And then there are four pipes on each level, meaning that there are 12 pipes in total. And now comes the most time consuming part of this entire project, which was drilling the holes that the net caps would sit in into the pipe. It was hard to decide how much space to leave between each hole because I didn't want the plants to be too cramped, but I also wanted to make really good use of the space. So I decided on eight inches between each hole and I've been actually really happy with that distance. It seems to have worked out quite well. So the first step in this project was cutting each pipe down to five feet in length because when I bought it, it was 10 feet long. I only wanted it five feet long. So cut it in half. And then the next part was to mark where each individual hole would be. So eight holes in the five feet long pipe with eight inches in between each hole. And then came the drilling. And yes, there was a lot of it. So drilling each individual hole in the pipe and that equaled out to 96 grow holes in total for my entire system, meaning that I can grow almost 100 heads of lettuce, which is actually insane considering the entire system really doesn't take up that much space. Then I sanded all of these holes really well so there were no rough edges and fast forward a few days and 
all of the holes were drilled. So the next step was the end caps and I got pretty creative with how I did this. So I glued a three inch end cap onto the end of every single pipe, but then to allow water to circulate all the way throughout the system, I ended up putting on a 90 degree one inch elbow in the middle of each of these end caps. So back to the workshop I went and I drilled one inch in diameter holes in the middle of each of these end caps. Then glued the 90 degree elbow into each cap. And in total, I was left with 24 of these end cap 90 degree elbow joints. Now this was the prep work that had to be done in the workshop before I could take everything and start assembling it and actually like building the real system in place. So the next step was making the actual structure that the pipes and the entire system would be sitting on and supported by. And my dad actually made it, so thank you so much, dad. It is made completely of wooden two by fours and the only kind of hard or annoying part about this was that the first level had to be built at a height above the height of the reservoir. So then that bottom pipe, the water could flow into the reservoir afterwards. If it was too low, then the water wouldn't flow back in. And once the structure was built, I screwed my grow lights right into the wood just with screws. And I can link down below the ones, the grow lights that I used. They are four feet long. And I ended up using two of them for each level. So six, four feet long grow lights in total. The next step was to glue the end caps with the 90 degree elbows onto the end of each pipe. And for this, I just used clear primer and then it was called PVC cement which was a food grade safe, really thick PVC glue. And that's what I used for actually all of the gluing for this entire project. And the hard thing here is that I had to move really fast because once you put that glue on the end cap, you have to stick it on that pipe right away because it hardens very fast. And the other thing is that if you stick it in, like if it's not at the right angle, then it'll just harden in place and you won't be able to get it off. So that was the hardest part was making sure that the end cap was placed just right so that the 90 degree elbow, it was parallel to the ground. So then to connect all of the elbows so that the water can just snake throughout the entire system, I used a one inch PVC pipe inside that one inch 90 degree elbow to connect all of the elbows together. And I did that for every single elbow on all of the levels. And the one inch pipe was only like three or four inches long, just enough so that we could glue it and it could connect the two elbows together. And then the last gluing that I did here was that same one inch pipe, but to connect each of the levels. Because once the water has snaked through the top level, it then drops down to the level below it. So then I used that one inch pipe to connect the 90 degree elbow from the top to the 90 degree elbow on the bottom and did that for each side so that then the water can flow from the top level to the middle level to the bottom level. And at this point, the system was basically made except for two very crucial elements. And that is the inflow and the outflow tubes. The inflow pipe is the pipe that the water travels from the reservoir up to the top layer in. And then the outflow pipe is the pipe that the water travels from the bottom layer down back into the reservoir in. And then it's just constantly recirculated throughout this circuit. Now the distance from my reservoir to the top layer of the system is six feet, which is a pretty big distance. So for this reason, I didn't use a hard one inch pipe like I did to connect all the elbows. Instead, I actually used this flexible one inch tube, which means that it had a lot more give and move to it, which actually becomes very important later on. And I'll explain that in a few minutes. Anyway, the inlet tube was connected to a one inch pipe that dropped down from the end cap. And on this one inch pipe, I glued a PVC union, which made it so easy to detach the system, to clean it or to move it. And then for the outlet, I did the same union system, except I used a hard PVC pipe that drained right into a hole into the reservoir. And after this, the system was officially complete. So I filled up the reservoir three quarters full with water. So about 70 liters of water out of my 100 liter reservoir. I set up the air stone with no problem and then I set up the water pump and I attached the flexible inflow tube to the pump and then plugged it into the wall so it has electricity. And just as I planned, the pump pumped the water from the reservoir to the top layer and snaked it all the way through the system and back into the reservoir. And it was running perfectly. really 
really good that we used a flexible tube for the inlet tube because I cut it right in the middle and then I glued on a plastic flow right valve. And now with this, I could just easily adjust the amount of water that was coming from the inlet tube up to the top layer of the reservoir. And it's been working for the past few months with absolutely no problem. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. Yeah, so I planted a bunch of lettuce and spinach in rock wool cubes, and then I let them sprout and grow roots in a little tray for around two weeks. And then I put these seedlings inside net cups and I plopped them right into the holes in the pipe. And then eight weeks later, they sprouted up. When designing and creating this system, I really didn't know what to expect or how the lettuce would do, but it has surpassed all of my expectations. It is huge and delicious. So yes, this is my hydroponics farm and I'd really like to thank my dad because this was really a team project and wouldn't have been built without him. So thank you so much, dad. And thank you to all of you for making it this far into the video. If you'd like to know more, like specific dimensions, step by step, like cut by cut and hole by hole, exactly what I did, um, links to products and just a very detailed explanation on this entire farm and how I created it, check out the link below in the description box. It's an article that I wrote detailing all of this in way more detail that I could cover in a YouTube video. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.